everyone. I'm very happy I can hold a presentation today for you guys. I mean, we're all used now to the online presentations, a lot of videos and stuff during the because of the situation at the moment. But um, yeah, so I want to go with you through the agenda first. In the beginning, I want to talk a little bit about motivation, how we can motivate ourselves. I want to talk about fitness of the rider. And after that, I want to explain some training options, how you can train, especially young horses. Um, yeah, which kind of options I have actually. And then at the end, I'm going to give you an example of a week plan. So I'm going to plan a week for a young horse and I'm going to plan a week for an older horse for a Grand Prix horse. So just that you get an idea how a week could look like. So to start with now with motivation. Yeah, how can we motivate ourselves? Um, doesn't matter in which kind of situation we are, if we're at home, if we go to shows, always stay calm, don't get stressed. It's very important that you always have a routine, a structure that on Monday, for example, you start planning your week for you and also for the horses. Um, and then you plan the day, you plan all the details for every day. Um, that's very important because if you just want to be flexible and make plans just now for the next hour, for the next few hours, um, I mean, that's possible, but you could or you should plan a bit ahead to, to have a better structure in the end. It's very important to be also social, that you talk to friends, to other riders. Um, for example, you can send or talk also, like you can talk to your trainer, send him videos. Um, for example, when the trainer is not coming every week to your place or you don't go there all the time, and sometimes you could take videos at home. Um, after, yeah, you could take them at home, send them to him and talk about it afterwards, see what you can improve, what can you do better, what other exercises you could practice. And you should plan after that with your trainer um, how you can continue, you can make new training plans. And what's very, very important is that you set some goals. So you have to ask yourself in the beginning, like, what do you want to work on actually? What is my goal? Um, where do I want to get in a few months? Where do I want to be in a few months? That's very important because if you don't have a goal, you don't have something to work towards to actually. Um, what I also find very interesting is to watch training videos from other riders to get new ideas what you can train. I mean, in the end, you have to filter out what's important for, for you as a rider because you should not completely change the way of riding um, because apparently the way you do it is successful, but you can just get some new ideas. And in the end, it's just everything about preserving mental health, staying motivated all the time then. So this is now again about what I just said. You have to ask yourself, what drives me forward? Um, for example, in the last couple of weeks, we had a lot of more time for other things and shows. We were home a lot more. So anyway, we have to think about how can we use our time efficiently? Um, you can have a lot of training sessions. I mean, you don't need to have them and like all of them in one day or just one week, you can um, maybe have one training session with one horse today and then you take a few days off. I mean, for example, jumping, then you not have another training session and um, you can repeat exercises. This is very important, especially for young horses, because sometimes they need a bit more time to understand things. Everything is new for them. And you also have to set priorities. When you have one horse, maybe it's important to work a lot on the flat work because the flat work is not so good. The horse is not really listening to you when you want to go forward or backwards. 
maybe another horse has such a good flat work but is a little bit stiff at the fence so then you should set priority for each horse for example, if there's one week you don't go to shows um, or one evening you're home and you have the time, you have time to reflect. You can watch old sh show videos. You can think of, okay, I went to this show and it was really good. I was facing the Grand Prix, for example. And then you can think of, okay, which bit did I have? How did I train before? So you really reflect the whole show, how it went actually. And what's very important is stay fit. Take time to do some workouts because we as riders, we have to be also fit. It's not just the worst. So what is really important about motivation is that you have to be focused all the time. I mean, for example, if you're not motivated and not really focused, then you could get some problems like for example when you have a few weeks no shows um, like it was the last couple of weeks then you can lose the motivation easy you can get lazy so that the horses lose good shape and um, and also you always have to think about the horse what is interesting for them how can you motivate them like you always have to plan for example okay it's today it's Monday and you say okay for example in two weeks I have a show so then you think okay how can I plan the next two weeks that I don't get bored I stay motivated my horses don't get bored they stay motivated so you have to kind of plan the weeks and use the time as much as you as much as you can you have to take time for training session. You have to adapt the training to each horse. Um, and as a rider, what I mentioned, you have to be in really good shape. This is a little bit when you had the crisis now with Corona, that you should see this as an opportunity and not, not as a problem. Or for example, now it is quite difficult to get into shows because everyone wants to go again everyone is motivated so maybe although the shows are starting you are not able to go to shows for the next couple of weeks because you don't get in because of the ranking or whatever so then yeah you could get some problems losing motivations but this is what i mentioned you should use also the time when you have for example no shows as an opportunity work on the things that are maybe not good enough and be motivated then to go to, to one show in a few weeks Yeah, this is what I just said. The fitness of the rider is so important. Um, here I mentioned the Corona time, but this is not just the Corona time. This is all the time. Um, I know sometimes it's very hard when you ride a lot of horses per day and you feel tired in the evening, but it's also really important to do other things, use other muscles, go for a run. Um, there are so many possibilities what you can actually do. You can do workouts um, for stability and strength, for fine movement and balance, for mobility and flexibility. I know Emma O'Dwyer, she has great ideas what you can do. And it's also to avoid problems um, when you get older. I mean, now when you're young, everything is fine. But um, for riding, you use all the time, every day, exactly the same muscles. So it's good to do something else. You can go for a run as well. So find a good mix of everything because in the end, it's not just the horse who's an athlete, it's you and the horse. So there are two athletes. So and now I wanna talk about training. Um, what I said in the beginning, first of all, you should set up a plan for the whole week. I mean, for sure with horses, you can not really plan every day, like every minute, because you work with animals and you can never plan what's happening next, but you can set up a, an overview for the whole week. So you plan each day for each horse. So which horse needs what kind of um, work? Is that a young horse? Is that an older horse? Is that a fresh horse or a bit lazy horse? 
if possible, you should ride in different arenas, sand, grass, um, go hacking. There are so many different options, but I will talk about that a bit later again. And also, um, you have options, not just riding. I mean, then you have field, paddock, launch, a lot of different things. But it's also important to give the horses rest sometimes. Um, I mean, for example, when we go for a run or for a long run, sometimes we feel tired the next day, we have some pain in their muscles. And this can also happen with horses. So, I mean, they cannot tell you they have some pain in the muscles, but you should think about what you did, for example, yesterday and sometimes give them some rest. It's important to start with basics, the flat weight. Um, yeah, especially practice that the horse is listening to you. I mean, start, for example, in Kenta, going forward, backwards, um, change the speed all the time, because this is what you need in the end in the course. I mean, sometimes there are lines you have to go a bit faster, a bit forward. There's another maybe afterwards coming really short line. So if these changing of this changing of the speed is already not working um, in the flat work, then for sure it's not working when you want to make jump. Then practice a lot of transitions. Um, and after that, when you have the feeling this is working quite good, then you can start with poles on the ground. Then, for example, you put two poles, let's say 20 meters, 21 meters, um, and then you can start with five strides. And then afterwards you do one times six, then you do again five, so that the horse is really, yeah, listening to you. Um, but you should always like do it slowly. And there's a difference between young horses and older horses because young horses, they probably don't know that much. You, so you should be really patient and give them also a lot of time. And when you have the feeling the horse is, is understanding what you want, then you can also start to, jumps, uh, to jump. But there are so many different options also concerning the jumping. I suggest to start always with single jumps. You can jump the fence from both sides. Um, I always say like going home and going away from home because for me, the horses sometimes they feel like different horses going home, then they, they are a lot faster and jumping a bit more forward and going away from home, then sometimes they stay a bit back. So it's good to always practice both sides. You can put poles in front of or after the fence. This depends a lot on the horse. I have the feeling it's helping a lot for young horses, but I will explain that later one more time. Or for example, if you have a horse, that always jumps a bit too far, lands a bit too far away after the fence. You could put a pole afterwards, but it's really important to start small because um, when the horses don't know it, they can get scared quite easy. And also for the understanding, start always small and then go bigger and makes everything so much easier. You could jump um, gymnastic lines, for example, you could build up four verticals in a row, or for example, you build two verticals, one oxa, and then one vertical. And also don't start to put the fences too close. So I would suggest, for example, put one jump, then you put around three meters, then one pole, then again three meters when you start really small. I mean like 50, 80 centimeters, or maybe one meter fences. Um, and then make it bigger and then you get the feeling also for the horse if maybe the lines is too close, like the jumps are too close or maybe not, it's too far away. So you really have to listen to your feeling and to what the horse needs actually. Um, and then you can also jump single lines. I mean, single lines part of the course. Um, for example, you have a line again with 21 meters, for example, or we can also say 17 meters, you do four strides. Um, but for example, when it's really small, sometimes then it makes more sense to add one stride because otherwise we have to re go really forward and this doesn't always make sense for the horse. So that's not so easy to say in general, okay, it's like 
70 meters, you have to do four stride. If you have a hot horse, which has not a big stride, maybe you should start with five strides and then change again and jump again from both sides. And then you could jump combination. And if all this is working, you have good feeling, then you can jump a course. But for me, it's always difficult to start slowly and do it step by step. And for example, if, if you make bigger and the horse doesn't really feel um, good and doesn't have maybe the confidence, then make smaller again and really take the time for everything. So to summarize now, um, I put some important aspects here. For me, it's so important to have a good mix of everything so that the horses um, are happy in the end. You should never ask too much and you cannot do everything in one day. It's like with the kids, they go to school and one day they learn to write one letter, but they will never ever learn to write a whole sentence in just one day. So you have to be very patient. Start always, doesn't matter how old is the horse, with small jumps, repeat exercises, especially when the horses don't really understand what you want. And uh, you have to adapt the training to the needs of each horse because it's like with us, with people, with human beings, everyone is different. Everyone needs different things, different practice, different exercises. And you also have to challenge yourself. I mean, it's easy to ride around and um, for example, when you have two poles, it's easy to do five strides, but maybe with one horse, it's very difficult to do six strides. But anyway, you should challenge yourself and try it. In the end, you, are the, you as a rider are the psychologist of the horse. And now I want to talk a little bit about young horses. Young horses, let's say five, six, seven, also maybe inexperienced horses with eight years old. It's always difficult to say a six-year-old horse is maybe or has more experience than another seven-year-old horse. So yeah, it's always difficult to say the age for me. Um, so yeah, what I mentioned before, always start slowly, take time. And for young horses, it's really important that you sometimes relax because sometimes you go, for example, to one arena, you want to jump and they feel super excited and everything is new when you have maybe new friends or you never know then you think like, oh, wow, they have so much energy. But in the end, they are just excited. And afterwards, they can be also exhausted. So sometimes let them relax and rest a little bit. For the flat work, start with easy exercises. And don't expect the young horses to learn in one training session. Um, you really have to repeat it for a couple of days, weeks, months. Some horses understand it quite fast, others not. But yeah, just be patient. And when you did some flat work, you can start with poles. This is exactly what I mentioned before. But for young horses, it's very important in the beginning to work from behind because they don't have all the muscles yet. So you should, for example, not slow them down too much. That means, for example, if you have 21 meters, what we said before, would be probably so difficult for them to do six or maybe no six will be fine, but maybe seven strides because yeah, they, they cannot do it. So you really have to do step by step. And then you can kind of build a course of poles and build some lines with the poles. That's, that's quite challenging for the horses. And then jump the course, what I said before, uh, changing the speed all the time that they really understand what you want. And then you can start jumping. So start with single jumps. Um, for young horses, I always have the feeling that it's helping a lot when you put poles. But yeah, start slowly when they don't know it and really small. And then trust your feeling again if you have to put the pole a bit closer or a bit further away. Um, and then before jumping a whole course, practice all the lines you have in the course. And if these lines are okay, then you can jump a course. But sometimes the young horses can be very spooky. So then it's really good to practice single lines and very small in the beginning. And then 
if the training is good at home, then go to a different place. Maybe you have a friend that has a stable somewhere and just go there, jump a course again, and then you're ready for the show. And because young horses at home, they are totally nice, not spooky, but then they go to a different place and they are totally excited and they feel like different horses. But you should always keep in mind that building up a young horse is a process of weeks, of months. It takes just so, so long. So you have to be patient and you have to trust your feeling and you have to believe in the horse. That's very important. So what you want in the end is happy horse. How do I get a happy horse? It's what I just said. You have to be patient. You have to take time. Very important, you have to adapt to the horse's needs. You have to plan step by step because if you plan, for example, for the next four weeks, um, you never know what, what will happen in four weeks. Maybe, unfortunately, the horse gets an injury or develops so good that maybe you can go a bit faster ahead with jumping, with everything, and you have to work with the horse and not against it, because in the end, you are a team with the horse. So now I want to talk a little bit about training options. So what kind of options do I actually have? It's what I said in the beginning, you have to find a good mix to keep the horses happy. I mean, these are options. I know that not every stable has all these options, but it's just to get in, to get some ideas. For example, you can ride in sand arena, you can ride in grass arena, um, you can go hacking, you can put the horses uh, on the band on treadmill, you can put the horse in the walker, you can use field and paddocks, which I find very, very important. They they love to be in the field, to be in the paddock, to be a little bit horse, jump around. I find it really important. For example, if the weather is not so good, you can do free running in indoor school. That means let them run a little bit. Um, but okay, for sure you have to be careful when the horses don't know this and also feel and paddock. Um, when they are, for example, too fresh, then they can also get injuries. So for example, if they don't know the field, you can first go there a little bit um, with the head color and the rope, with the leash, and just eat, let them eat some grass. Next time, next day, maybe you ride them and then afterwards they can go in the field that they get step by step used to it and you avoid problems or injuries. You can do handwork, you can do launch. Yeah, so there are actually so many different options. Um, and now I, I made a plan for, or I want to make a plan now for two of my horses. So I have this whiteboard in my stable and I really like it because you can see on the left all the names of the horses and then you have the whole week. You see the farrier um, and any information that are important to me, I can put here, um, which shows I'm going to uh, what I need from the shop, for example, who needs to go to the farrier next. And all these things and I have a good overview and for example if I plan a week for one horse on Saturday I still know what the horse did for example on Monday. So now I take for example Bantu by this is my best horse he's my Grand Prix horse he's 11 years old now and I try to find always a good mix of everything. I mean, I'm lucky the facilities um, at Schokemühle, they are really, really good. So we have a lot of options what we can do with the horses. Um, so for example, I say, this is a typical week when we have no show. I say, for example, on Monday morning, I ride him on the sand. Then he goes to the field and he goes to the walker. Um, when he goes to the field, I find it always important that he goes out the third time because in the field he's uh, just eating and not moving so much. So then this is very important, I think. For example, then on Tuesday, he goes on the treatment and I write him. Then twice is enough. I always try to find a mix. Sometimes he goes out twice, sometimes three times because it's what I said. Sometimes I want to let him rest also a little bit. 
Then on Wednesday, for example, in the morning, I jump him on the grass or on his hand, whatever I want, maybe it depends on where's my next show. And then afterwards, for me, he always deserves a feed. He can eat as much and enjoy being a horse, just jump a little bit around. Uh, and then he can go a little bit in the walk again, also after jumping training that he doesn't get too stiff and too much pain in the muscles. So it's good that he walks a little bit afterwards. Um, on Thursday, I, I ride him again, maybe yeah, on the grass or sand, or I could also go on the, on the racetrack. I didn't mention that before, just for him, for the horse sometimes to get different thoughts, uh, yeah, thoughts just yeah, don't be in the arena every time. So that's sometimes really nice. And then he can go on the free one afterwards. Um, Friday, also riding again, then maybe paddock, because if he if I put him always in the field, he yeah, gets a bit uh fat. <laughs> so paddock sometimes is good. Um Saturday launch and Sunday, then one day no riding, then he can relax a little bit. And now I have one plan for a seven-year-old horse, the Achaka Rouge. She has a lot of blood, she has always a lot of energy. And I would plan the week for her that, for example, on Monday, she goes in the paddock first, then she goes in the walker, and then I ride her. Because it's always good when she was in the paddock before, because otherwise for riding, she's very fresh. So I avoid problems later and makes everything so much easier for the riding. Um, then I plan for Wednesday to jump her like a course, for example. So that's why on Tuesday, I would do some gymnastics and just little jumps, maybe gymnastic line that she's not too fresh for Wednesday. And then also Wednesday before the jumping, I would give her a little launch um, that she can buck a little bit and then she doesn't feel really tense or not too tense for the training, for the jumping training afterwards. Then on Thursday, she can have a day off riding. She just goes into the field because what I said before with young horses, sometimes you should yeah, think about that they, they can relax, that they still have energy also when you jump them. And yeah, this is very important, I find. And then again, the same, I would ride her on Friday, Saturday. And Sunday, there's again no riding, so she would have two days off. Um, that's actually now the difference. If I compare now the two horses, the, the differences are actually that the young horses, for me, it's very important when you want to have a proper training session, they should be always relaxed and not too fresh. That's why maybe the day before you jump little jumps. Um, and also then give them a bit more rest and than the older horses. And for the older horses, it's important that they don't get stiff and they always stay flexible. So it's always good to ride them maybe six times a week. Okay, it's difficult to say in general, but I find it more important that they stay in good shape and the young horses, they always are in good shape because they're always full of energy and, and they are young. It's uh, with us when we get older, then we get also a bit more stiff and everything. Um, yeah, so it, actually this is uh, exactly here. You see again the difference, um, what I said before. Um, yeah, these were the biggest differences actually. But okay, it's super difficult to say. When you have, for example, a young horse which has not so much energy, then maybe you don't need gymnastic jumps before jumping a proper course. You don't maybe need to launch the horse. So just an idea um, how I would plan the week. And that's what I said, find a good mix of everything to keep the horses happy. Um, don't make life too boring for them. They should always be motivated. They should be happy to jump so that in the end, uh, in the ring, they fight for you and they give everything. Yeah, so very, very important. Always stay positive and focused. I hope um, the presentation was interesting for you and I could give you some ideas. 
And I really hope to see all of you very, very soon. Bye-bye.